Mm, it is maybe more annoying to face, but it's probably also not so scary. The point is after d e knight c five. White is hoping to kind of disturb the coordination of black's pieces. Queen b6, knight takes b7, queen takes b7, fe, and now knight d7. And black is all set to just gobble up this e-pawn, so white really has to do e6. F takes e6, but I suspect white does not really have enough compensation here. Um, because even though the extra pawn is not so tremendous, Black does have active pieces. He can play for d8, queen c7. He's very good control over d4 and e5. So if white doesn't act fast, black will just play queen to c7 and knight d4. But because black has actually had development, it's hard to see how white's going to really um, give black serious problems. So a little annoying having these doubled pawns, but um, if you turn the board around and look at white, you'll probably feel even less happy. So this piano does not make this continuation. Instead he plays a4. And I almost feel like in this game, this piano did not have anything specific prepared. He just thought he would play positionally against young Carlson. But I think a lot of these lines are easy to play for black. b4, knight d5, knight takes d5, ed, and now knight a5. And structures like this also arise um, with a bishop on g5 in this old Karpov line that Fishbein played against me. And one thing I found is that once we have this structure with a pawn on d5, a lot of times black doesn't even have to worry about this e-pawn, because if he loses the e-pawn, he still has a good pawn structure. And there's so much pressure on, like, b2 and c2. And that's kind of what happened in this game, except white never even was able to capture anything on e7. So now if white takes on a5, black just takes with a queen, he can play rook ac8 to put the bishop on f6 to cover e7. Very hard for white to get any play. And also, this move f4 looks very out of place in this structure. All it does is lock in the c1 bishop. The move is not attacking anything. And really white is just uncomfortable with pressure against b2 and c2. And even d5 sometimes. So... Here, previously played was queen d3, and after rook c8, um, pressuring c2, and also introducing the possibility of knight c4, uh, black has done pretty well. And this piano played c3, a very odd move at first. Um, I think he did this hoping to fight for the initiative, because uh, the pawn is, is hanging, frankly. After bc, bc. Carlson played a nice move here. If he plays bishop takes c3, which is doubtless playable, rook b1, looking at x-ray against the bishop on a8, rook b8, bishop e3, white at the cost of a pawn has uh, eliminated the pressure on c2 and b2 simply by eliminating the pawns themselves. And at least white has an active position. Um, you know, maybe uh, bishop to a7, is a possibility. Um, white can play queen d3 and develop quickly. I'm not so convinced white has enough for the pawn, but he at least has counterplay. The way Carlson played, I think white really suffers. He played this nice move. After bc, bc, he played rook c8. I am arguing that this pawn is not going anywhere. It's attacked twice now and not protected at all. And now he can play bishop to a8, which is what happened after rook b1, bishop a8. So instead of playing like a passive move, rook to b8, he just slides the bishop out of the way and keeps all the advantages of his position. Now, this piano played knight d2, which looks horribly passive. He can't really protect the pawn. And if bishop d2 or bishop b2, um, black could either take or maybe even still play knight c4 with a lot of positional advantage. If he plays knight d4, trying to activate his pieces, rook takes c3, bishop to b2, rook c5, bishop a3. Black can either play rook c4, just move out of the way, or even interesting exchange sack, rook takes d5, bishop takes d5, bishop takes d5, and black has two pawns.